So what what's a mole? Well, a mole is a unit of measurement that we use in chemistry to describe a lot of atoms and molecules grouped together. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And uh, you might see it abbreviated as mole. So think of mole as a uh, as a basket, right? And uh, it's a basket, as mentioned, of either molecules or atoms. But there's a heck of a lot in there. And even though molecules are very different from from atoms, um, the quantity that you have in there doesn't really matter um, because uh, in a sense that it's still the same. So, so what doesn't matter is whether it's an atom or a molecule. It's one mole is still one mole is still one mole. Um, a good example would be if you had like a dozen eggs, right? Or a dozen donuts. Or let's say a dozen bagels, right? A dozen is still a dozen is still a dozen. Molecules and atoms are very different. Although, if you have one mole of molecules, you're gonna, uh, it's you can still have one mole of atoms. Right? So let's see what that means. So yeah, mole is quantity. Uh, Avogadro's number: six point zero two two times ten to the twenty third. Oh, uh, one more thing. The reason why we use mole is because. Uh, if we were to use this quantity all the time, it would just be really difficult to write. It, so it's it's a shorthand basically, so you don't get a uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. That's that's why we use mole. Okay. So two mole would just be double this Avogadro's number, twelve point what is that? Oh four four times ten to the twenty third uh, atoms or molecules. If you wanted to specify uh, the exact number of how many atoms or molecules you have. And so on and so on. Yeah, they make it real easy on the periodic table because what they state is that for each one of these atoms, one mole is going to weigh a particular amount. In other words, if you had carbon that's 12.0107 grams for every mole of carbon you have. Nitrogen is 14.00674 grams for every mole of nitrogen you have and so on. For oxygen, 15.9994 grams per mole, and that's atomic weight. Okay. So, so the periodic table specifies uh, how, mu how many grams you have in one mole of that particular substance. All right. Or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that particular substance. And it would make sense as you go along the periodic table uh, to the right and down, that atoms would get heavier because they have more protons and neutrons, right? Those are the heavy guys. They also have more electrons, but when referring to uh, mass number atomic weight, electrons are about um, 2,000 times lighter than your protons and neutrons, which are of about equal weight. So you don't really need to be concerned with those. But what you do need to be concerned with is that as you go to the right and down, atomic weight increases... In other words, the number of grams per mole you have of that substance because you're going to have more protons and neutrons. All right. So, let's say you had something like iodine. That's 126.90447 grams per mole. And so on. So, let, let's try a couple of uh, examples using the... Um, Atomic weights. All right. Now, 
I want the atomic weight of, let's say, hydrogen. Well, the atomic weight of hydrogen, it's written right on the periodic table, right? Let's see what it says here. 1.00794 grams per mole. So 1.00794 grams per mole. Let's say I wanted the atomic weight of carbon. Well, just got to look at the periodic table. And the atomic weight of carbon is 12.0107 grams per mole. In other words, if I had one mole of each of these guys, that's how much it would actually weigh. But again, we don't say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd because it's just it's just too darn tough to, tough to say all the time. That number's too big. So uh, again, if we say mole, it's a basket of these guys or, or a shorthand way to say that we, we, got, we got a whole mess of them. Let's try another one. If we have uh, oxygen, well, oxygen, it says right here, 15.9994 grams per mole. And uh, so on. Uh, if we had, let's say, chlorine, we'll just do one more. Well, just look at the periodic table for the atomic weight. And chlorine is going to be 35.4527 grams per mole. Thirty-five. What was that again? 35.4527 grams per mole. Right. It's atomic weight. And now, oops, that's another lesson. Let's go this way. Let's take uh, the atomic weight and see if we can figure out molar mass. Well, molar, molar mass and atomic weight are very similar. It's just that one has to do with atoms, one has to do with molecules. So in other words, if we were to take the molar mass of H2O, which is a molecule of two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen, what we would have to do, since we have two H's plus one oxygen, we need to multiply two times the atomic weight, which is 1.00794, And then combine that with one atom of oxygen, with, uh, and the atomic weight is 15.9994 grams per mole. All right. And you can put an invisible one outside the oxygen here. Uh, all, we, all we need to remember is that if we have one atom of oxygen, it's one times 15.9994. And if we have two atoms of hydrogen, it's two times its atomic weight which is 1.00794 grams per mole and let's let's add them up see what we get 1.00794 times 2 is going to be 2.01588 so Double check the number of significant figures. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They match. Uh, we add that to 15.9994 grams per mole. And we get. Let's draw a decimal in there clearly. 18.01528. Now, let's be consistent with our addition of significant figures. If we're only going to four decimal places or the ten thousandths place here, and this guy goes to the hundred thousandths place, we can only go to the ten thousandths place in our answer based on our rule of significant figures. So we're going to cross this guy out. But since that was an eight, Let's round up. So we're left with 18.0153 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of water. Okay, let's go to the right. Got some other stuff there. Let's try uh, 
I don't know, uh, carbon dioxide, CO2. What's the molar mass? Well, CO2 is one carbon atom. What's the atomic weight of carbon? Well, it's right here. 12.0107 grams per mole. And let's add that to two atoms of oxygen, which is 15.9994 grams per mole. And if we add those up, what we will get is 12.0107 plus 31.9988 grams per mole to give us decimal in there. It'll give us 44.0095 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of carbon dioxide. In other words, one mole of carbon dioxide, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide, are going to equal 44.0095 grams. Let's try another one, uh, table salt, sodium chloride, right? How much does it weigh? Well, what's its molar mass? One times sodium is 22.989770. What is that again? 22. uh 22.989770 plus one times, we have one atom of chlorine, 35.4527. Save these guys up, and let's see what we get. Again, we can only go to the 10 thousandths place based on our rule of significant figures, and we have 22.989770 plus 35.4527, and I get... 58.44247 grams per mole, but again, the rule for adding significant figure states that we can only go up to four decimal places. So we got to make this guy into a five, right? 47, round up, 44, 58.4425 grams per mole. That's how much sodium chloride weighs. In other words, if we had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sodium chloride, it would weigh 58.4425 grams. So mole, again, is just an easier way to um, relay the idea of Avogadro's number.